Hey friends, I'm Amanda. This is the Happy Homestead and today we're going to make dinner. I am embarking on a Whole30 journey. If you've been following along the channel, you've heard me talk about this a little bit over the past month or two and uh, we're starting, my husband and I are starting again. We try to do this every two to three months max. Um, just kind of reset everything, feel good and uh, get the most optimal nutrition for ourselves. And so Whole30 is real foods. There are no packaged foods that you purchase and truly there are no packaged foods that you should be eating. It's whole real foods. Now this can include animal products as well as fruits and vegetable plants products. So it is no alcohol, no sugar, and that includes honey, maple syrup, uh, you can come at me with your stevia or Splenda. Splenda is a, a definite no, but any of your xylitol of your natural sweeteners, it's a no. <laughs> it still has the same effect on the body. So no alcohol, no sugar, no legumes, which is um, basically all of your beans or peanuts. Uh, so no black beans, kidney beans, those types of things. Uh, no grains, so no wheat, no corn, uh, no oats, right? No grains at all. And no dairy products, no cheese, no creamers, no milks, no yogurts, etc. And again, don't come at me with your plant-based yogurts or milks or dairy products because they are not a whole food. They are a manufactured food. Uh, whole food is something that is in its whole form. And so tonight we are having lettuce wraps, Asian lettuce wraps, with um, rice. Now, I'm not eating the rice. My husband's not eating the rice. I'm making the brown rice for our children. Um, but the Asian lettuce wraps with a cucumber salad. And so I'll take you along and show you how we're making dinner tonight. The first thing I'm going to do is get the cucumber salad going. It's not anywhere near dinner time yet, but this is something that you can make ahead of time, have it kind of marinate in the fridge within um, the ginger, the garlic, uh, the vinegar, the onion, right? And so it just helps the flavors come together when it's time for dinner. I would make this up to a day in advance, but probably not more than that. Otherwise the cucumber gets just a little soggy and soft and you still want it to have that crunch. So I am using these big cucumbers. It really doesn't matter what kind of cucumber you have. I prefer these. I cannot for the life of me remember what these are called. <laughs> I have a they have a name. I can't remember, but they don't have as many seeds. It's not as seedy as some of those other types of cucumbers. So I'm going to start with these. Now, what I like to do just to even make this a little bit prettier, whoops, is I don't peel the entire cucumber, but I like to peel kind of some lines in it. just like that. And then I am actually going to slice on the diagonal because again, it just makes it visually more appealing. If you have a mandolin, a very thin slicer, you could do something like that too. These don't have to be really thin. Now you can see I'm doing it about, I don't know, maybe a quarter of an inch thick because anything thinner than that, I just know isn't going to last that long in the refrigerator because it will get pretty soggy. And you don't have to slice it on the angle either. Again, it just kind of changes it up a bit and makes it look pretty. Okay, so my two cucumbers are sliced up. I'm now going to mince three cloves of garlic. So while I'm chopping three cloves of garlic, mincing that up to get into the bowl, I want to maybe try to address some questions that you could have or that could come up in your mind when you're thinking about something like the Whole30 program. And that is, um, you know, some of the products out there that would be gluten-free, 
um, or like I mentioned, the dairy-free, it really, it's not accepted, right? Anything that has a barcode or an ingredient label, think of it that way. Anything that's been manufactured, um, put together by some sort of company, right? Rather than grown in nature the way it is, is not accepted. Now there are a couple of exceptions to that, and that would be coconut milk. Um, not the coconut milk that you'll find in the dairy section, right? But rather the coconut milk in a can that is just strictly coconut milk. I think what saved me the very first time that I did the Whole30 program was uh, potatoes. You know, you think about carbs being bad at least a lot of people do and that's really not the case it's just all of the processed food the seed oils those kinds of things that is what is really bad for us um, and potatoes the way nature intended are delicious filling and healthy so i think potatoes were my saving grace right because i could feel like i could be satiated and that i really wasn't missing out um, on anything. The other thing is fat. Fat is good for us when we think about the healthy fats. By the way, I'm just mincing up about two to three inches of fresh ginger here. I'm just cutting the skin off and then I'm going to mince that up just like the garlic. But people think fats are, you know, evil and that's just not the case. So when you're on Whole30, you do want to make sure that you're eating some fats. Um, this can be through avocado. Uh, avocado was another one of my saving graces, whether it be in a meal on top of um, eggs or even just plain with a little bit of Redmond Real Salt. That's always been my favorite way. But also the fats meaning um, lard or maybe tallow or duck fat, right? Any of those natural fats in their natural form. So you can have ghee, because ghee is clarified butter, which means those milk solids have been replaced, or excuse me, not replaced, removed. And so ghee is acceptable for cooking. Um, so I would use ghee sometimes, um, but mainly we used either bacon fat or lard, or olive oil. You can have extra virgin olive oil also. Okay, so that's the ginger. Okay, so I got one shallot that I'm very thinly slicing. Okay, now that we've got everything chopped and in the bowl, I went over to my cabinet and I got some toasted sesame oil and I've also got some rice vinegar. We're gonna just put a little bit of that in there with some salt, some pepper, and then a dash of hot red pepper flakes. I'm gonna cover this up, put it in the fridge, and leave it till dinner. It's time to get going on the lettuce cups. So I have two pounds of ground pork. I'm using pork, because that's what we have. Um, I'm just putting these in a stainless steel saucepan. But you can use ground chicken, you can use ground turkey. Um, even use ground beef if you have that and I chose to do two pounds uh, because there are four of us and we are hungry so while the pork is heating up and have the burner on medium high to get that browned I have one small carrot shredded I've got a bunch like a handful of scallions that are diced I've got four cloves of garlic that are minced and about four inches of uh, fresh ginger that is peeled and minced. 
I don't need to add any fat to the pan because this is ground pork and there's just inherently by nature already fat in here. But if you're using turkey or chicken, um, a much more leaner meat, then you may want to add a tiny bit of olive oil or even lard or bacon fat. So I just added some coconut aminos uh, to the pot because when you're on Whole30, soy sauce is technically not allowed because the soybean is a legume. So coconut aminos is a really great alternative. And you can find coconut aminos at just about any store. It's just a really great replacement, especially if there's anyone in your family that uh, maybe has a soy allergy as well. So I don't need to add any salt because we added the coconut aminos. Just adding in some ground pepper. We're gonna brown this meat just like you would any other ground meat before we add everything else in. I'm gonna start to add some seasoning. I've got some leek powder. Basically um, the greens of the leeks dried and ground up into a powder. You can use onion powder also. I'm gonna add just a pinch of red pepper flakes. Also some more of that sesame oil. I'm not adding a whole lot, just enough to give it some flavor. As well as a splash of the rice vinegar. So the meat is cooked through. I'm gonna add all of my chopped diced veggies. I also have one can of diced water chestnuts. And everything's cooked through at this point, but we're just gonna let the veggies wilt a little bit, give the garlic and some ginger time to really help come together with the pork too. So I pulled some kimchi out of the fridge. We're gonna use kimchi with our dinner tonight. I also pulled out the cucumber salad, which looks and smells really good. And I had half of a Savoy cabbage in the fridge. And this is what we're gonna use for our lettuce cups rather than using lettuce. Still pretty pliable, it'll work. dinner is done. I really tried to film like plating it, but my um, family was ravenous wolves, <laughs> so, including myself. So this is the aftermath, which I now need to clean up, but it was delicious. It really was. Um, absolutely would make it again. So hope you'll try it. Let me know. Stay healthy. Stay well. Bye-bye.